ladies and gentlemen. When theology confronts the word of God and his biblical witnesses, it has its place very concretely in the community, not somewhere in empty space. From a theological point of view, the best course here would be to avoid the word church, at least as much as possible, if not altogether. At all events, this overshadowed and overburdened word should be immediately and consistently interpreted by the word community. What may on occasion also be called church is, as Luther liked to say, Christianity, Christenheit was his word. Understood as a nation rather than as a system of beliefs. It is the commonwealth gathered, founded and ordered by the word of God. The communion of the saints. These are the men who were encountered by the Lord, witnessed in Holy Scripture, and so moved by it that they could not withdraw themselves from its message and call. Instead, they became able willing and ready to receive it as secondary witnesses, offering themselves, their lives, soul and speech to the word of God. The word cries out for belief, for its acceptance in recognition, trust, and obedience. And since faith is not an end in itself, this cry of the word means that it demands to be proclaimed to the world to which it is directed from the outset. First of all, it insists upon being annunciated by the choir of its primary witnesses. The community represents the secondary witnesses. The society of men called and arouse to believe in and simultaneously to testify to the word in the world. In this community, theology also has its place with a spatial function. I believe, and so I spoke. This word taken over from the psalmist by Paul indicates the situation peculiar <coughs> to the community as such in its entirety and in the last analysis to each one of its members. 
the community is confronted and coined by the word of God. <coughs> it is communio sanctorum, the communion of the saints, because it is congregatio fidelium, the gathering of the faithful. As such, it is the communio testium, the confederation of the witnesses who may and must speak because they believe. The community does not speak with words alone. It speaks by the very fact of its existence in the world, also by its characteristic attitude to world problems, moreover and especially by its silent service to all the handicapped, weak and needy in the world. It does all this because this is the person, the purpose of its servants by the word of God, because it cannot avoid doing such things since it believes. <coughs> Nonetheless, from the very beginning, it also expresses itself in spoken words and sentences by which it attempts to make its face audible according to the servants of the word that it hears. The work of the community consists also in its oral and written word in the self-expression by fulfilling commission of preaching, teaching, and pastoral counseling. And here begins the special service, the special function of theology in the community. <coughs> in this area, between the speech of the community and its face, a problem arises. What is the proper understanding of the word that founds faith? The proper thought about this word, the proper way to speak of it. Here, proper does not mean pious, edifying, inspired, and inspiring. Neither does it mean something that would satisfy the categories of reason, thought, and speech of its environment. Also, such properties could certainly be well suited to the speech of the community. They have no decisive significance for what this speech must achieve. Was it is was is at stake is itself truth. Take note that the quest of truth is not imposed on the community by the outside world, as the community in modern times let itself to a large extent be persuaded the quest is not 
post in the name and authority of some general norm of truth or some criterion that is generally proclaimed as valid. Instead, it comes from within or more precisely from above. It comes from the word of God that founds the community and its faith. The question about truth, therefore, is not stated in the familiar way. Is it true that God exists? Does God really have a covenant to his man? Is Israel really his chosen people? Did Jesus Christ actually die for all sins? Was he actually raised from the dead for our justification? And is he actually our Lord? This is the way fools ask in their hearts. Admittedly, such fools as we all are in the habit of being. In theology, the question about truth is stated on another level. Does the community properly understand the world in its purity as the truth? Does it understand this appropriate sincerity the world that was spoken in and with all those events? Does the community reflect on the word, painstakingly and speak of it in clear concepts. And if the community in a position to render its secondary testimony responsibly and with a good conscience, these are the questions posed for the community, questions that are really urgent only for the people of God, and the positive answer can never nowhere be taken for granted. Even the most able speech of the most living faith is a human work. And this means that the community can go astray in its proclamation of the word of God, in its interpretation of the biblical testimony, and finally in its own faith. Instead of being helpful, it can, it can be obstructive to God's cause in the world by understanding an understanding that is partly or wholly wrong, by winding or warped thought, by silly or by too subtle speech. Every day the community must pray that this may not happen. But it must also do its own share of earnest work toward this goal. This work is theological work. There is no other way in principle, the community and the whole of Christianity are required and called to do 
such work? The question posed all along the line for the community and actually for all its members is whether the community is a true witness. The question therefore concerns not only the community speech, but also its very existence. The community speaks in the surrounding world by the position it takes or fails to take on the political, social and cultural problems of the world. The question of truth also concerns the community's order of worship, discipline, constitution and administration as well as its quiet ministerial work which is perhaps not so quiet at all. The question concerns every Christian since the Christian life is consciously or unconsciously also a witness since he is responsible for the quest for truth in this witness every Christian as such is called to be also a theologian how much more so those who are spatially commissioned in the community, whose service is preeminently concerned with speech in the narrower sense of the term. It is always an, a suspicious phenomenon. When leading churchmen with or without the bishop's cross, along with certain fiery evangelists, preachers, or well-meaning warriors for this or that practical Christian cause, are heard to affirm cheerfully but no doubt, also a bit disdainfully, that theology is, after all, not their business. I am not a theologian. I am an administrator. <laughs> As a very high-placed English churchman once said, so, and just as bad is the fact that not a few preachers, after they have exchanged their student years for the routine of practical service, seem to think that they are allowed to leave theology behind them as the butterfly does its caterpillar form, <laughs> as if it were an exertion over and done with for them. That will not do at all. <laughs> Christian witness must always be forged anew in the fire of the question of truth. Otherwise, it can in no case, at no time, in no one's mouth be a witness that is substantial and responsible and consequently trustworthy and forceful. Theology is no undertaking that could be blithely handed over or left to others 
by anyone engaged in the ministry of God's word in the ministerium verbi divini. Theology is no hobby for some especially interested and gifted individuals. A community that is awake and conscious of its commission and task in the world will of necessity be a theologically interested community. This holds true in still greater measure for those members of the community who are specially commissioned. It is fitting, however, that there may and should be a special theological activity, just as their special emphasis in other function of the community. This special theological science, research and doctrine concentrates on the testing of the whole communal work in the light of the question of truth. It functions to a certain extent vicariously and even professionally. In this form, which is here our main concern, theology is related to the community and its faith just about as jurisprudence is related to the state and its law. The inquiry query and doctrine of theology, therefore, are not an end in themselves, but rather function of the community and especially of its ministerium Verbi Divini. Theology is committed directly to the community and especially to those members who are responsible for preaching, teaching and counseling. The task theology has to fulfill is continually to stimulate and lead them to face squarely the question of the proper relation of their human speech to the word of God, which is the origin, object, and content of this speech. Theology must give them practice in the right relation to the quest for truth, demonstrating and exemplifying to them the proper understanding, thought and discourse in this matter. It must accustom them to the fact that here nothing can be taken for granted that work is indispensable in this matter, just as prayer is. It must also show along what line is this work has to be conducted. Theology would be an utter failure if it should place itself in some elegant eminence, where it would be concerned only with God, the world, man, and some other items. Perhaps source of historical interest, instead of being theology for the community, like the pendulum in a clock that regulates its movements, so theology is responsible 
for the reasonable service of the community. It reminds all the members and especially those who have greater responsibilities how serious their situation and task are. In this way, it opens for them the way to freedom and to joy in their service. To serve the community of today, theology itself must be rooted in the community of yesterday. Its testimony to the world and the profession of its faith must originate like the community itself from the community of past times from which the work of today arose. Theology must originate also from the older and the more recent tradition, which determines the present form of its sweetness. The foundation of its inquiry and instruction is given to theology beforehand along with the task which it has to fulfill. Theology does not labor somewhere high above the foundation of tradition as so church history began today for the first time. Nevertheless, the special task of theology is a critical one, in spite of its relative character. The fire of the quest for truth has to be brought to bear on the proclamation of the community and on the tradition determining this proclamation. Theology has to reconsider the confession of the community, testing and rethinking it in the light of its foundation, object and content, which is the word of God witnessed in Scripture. The faith of the community is asked to seek understanding. Faith seeking understanding. Fides queris intellecto is what theology must embody and represent. What distinguish faith from a blind ascent is ju just its special character as faith seeking understanding. Certainly, the assumption behind all this will be that the community itself may have been on the right track in recent or remote past, or at any rate, not on an altogether border path. Consequently, fundamental trust instead of mistrust will be the initial attitude of theology toward the tradition which determines the present day church. And any questions and proposals which theology has to direct to the tradition will definitely not be 
trust on the community like a decree. Theology doesn't speak from heaven. Any such findings will only be presented for consideration as well weighed suggestions. Nevertheless, no ecclesiastical authority should be allowed by theology to hinder it from honestly pursuing its critical task and the same applies to any frightened voices from the midst of the rest of the congregation. The task of theology is to discuss freely the reservation as well as proposals for improvement which occur to it in the reflection on the inherited witness of the community. Theology says Credo, I believe, along with the present day community and its fathers. But it says Credo of Intelligum, I believe in order that I may understand. For this understanding it must be granted. Leave it for the good of the community itself. There are three points at which this freedom becomes important. First of all, a tacit presupposition in our last lecture on the immediate witnesses of the word of God was that we know who these witnesses are. We presuppose that both the community and theology know the identity of these witnesses who, since they are immediate, are authoritative for the community and its service. A further presupposition was that we know which scriptures must be read and interpreted as holy scriptures and acknowledged and respected as a theological norm. In fact, we do know this. For theology is a service in and for the community and springs from the tradition of the community. In this matter, theology clings to that confession which is perhaps the most important and portentous one of all church confessions of faith. That is the selection of the various writings that, as we have heard, attested themselves to the community as genuine prophetic and apostolic witnesses. A selection that was unanimously accepted by the community of the late 4th century. The character of these writings as such witnesses is what the fathers of those days recognized and confessed by faith in God's word whose image and echo 
say perfect in this very frequency. That is the knowledge and confession to which the community of every following century has also committed itself and made which on the whole it has made good experiences. And just that traditional canon with the working hypothesis that theology first of all simply risk for the decisive reason that it cannot refuse to join in that age-old act of faith if it is to be a service in and for that community. The precise task of theology, however, is credo ut in clinicum. I believe in order to understand in the fulfillment of its spatial task. Theology now wishes to grasp and understand specific one thing, the extent to which the canonical collection acknowledged by the earlier generation actually is the canon of Holy Scripture. But how can this question be decided otherwise than through knowledge the content of those writings. How else can the rightness of the traditional respect for the canon be tested than by setting that working hypothesis in action? How else than in the questioning of the texts of the Old and New Testaments as to whether and to what extent authentic witness of God's word may be actually heard in these writings. How else, therefore, than in the investigation of those texts in the light of this question by engagement in the exegetical circles that is inevitable for the understanding of those texts. This investigation does not consist in premature realization, but in expectation of the event. The event in which the authority of these texts speaks for itself. In this way, the old GC understands and knows that the search for the authentic witness to God's word is fruitful in the traditional canon. Theology knows also, however, that this search in the canon must be conducted with earnestness and with total frankness. To be sure, theology always gropes to a great extent in the dark, with only a gradual, variable, partial knowledge. Nevertheless, even limited knowledge may convey, like a look through a keyhole, a glimpse upon the riches of God's glory, which is mirrored in the totality of the biblical testimony. In the second place, the thought and speech of the community has behind them 
a long history which is confused and confusing in many ways. The community's attention to the voice of the Old and New Testament and to the word of God witnessed by this voice was not always equally sensitive and accurate. It did not always withstand the temptation to listen to all sorts of strange voices as well. And often it listened almost entirely to them, to the voice of that old serpent. The dogmas, creeds and confessions of the community are the documents of its resistance to this temptation and at the same time of its new return to its origins, to its sources. They are the profession of its faith formulated in opposition to all sorts of unbelief, superstition, and error. If theology did not take seriously the tradition of the community in the form of these documents of conflict, it would not be service in and for the community. In attempt to measure up to the quest for truth today, it must show both respect for the tradition and eagerness to learn from it. It must take note how one thing was occasionally defined and proclaimed as right and another anathematized as wrong. Mark no consensus by the consent of the majority of the fathers. During the time is of beclouding of the Christian witness. Theology will often enough have occasion to wonder at the wisdom and determination of the decisions of the fathers that were made in their time and became significant for all times. Nevertheless, the significance of tradition may not be simply taken for granted. Credo, indeed, but credo ut intelligam. No dogma or article of the creed can be simply taken over and tested by theology from ecclesiastical antiquity. Each must be measured above all from the very beginning by the Holy Scripture and the Word of God. And under no circumstances may theology set out to appropriate, by all means, some sort of creedal uh, proposition, because perhaps they are so old and widespread and famous. If it is seriously committed to the quest for truth, theology will forego seeking the name and fame of an orthodoxy faithful to tradition. There is no heterodoxy worse than such orthodoxy. 
Sochi knows and practices only one faithfulness. All the same, just this one faithfulness may perhaps prove to be also faithfulness to the confessions of the early church and the Reformation to the confession of our fathers for long stretches of the way. On the basis of the intellect of Fidei, the understanding which is characteristic of faith. Thirdly, and finally, a brief comment is called for as a fact. That the history of theology itself belongs to the tradition determining the community. As in all previous considerations, the communio sanctorum may and should be the starting point for understanding, even though this hypothesis is by no means easy to carry out. Least of all in this case. Nevertheless, the risk must be taken also in our relation to the history of theology. The same hypothesis and risk apply particularly to the ruling theology of the past, whether of yesterday, of 50, or of a hundred years ago. Time and again, the community grows used to living from what was said from the pulpits and otherwise yesterday in it and to it. As a rule, it lives from the Christian knowledge of yesterday. In the meantime, it is to be hoped Theology has advanced somewhere, somewhat further. And what is supposed to know what it ventures to think and to say today? This will only seldom agree completely with what the father of yesterday thought and said. The far greater likelihood is that the newer theology will vigorously take exception to the fathers, especially to the immediate fathers. Even if this tension is justified by the vigorous nature of theological science, Theology will still do well to keep in contact with its predecessors for better or for worse. Theology of yesterday is a bubbling source of the community and above all of theology itself. We will listen, therefore, with special attention and patience. Precisely to those fathers of yesterday, interpreting them not only according to the critical rule, uh, credo et intelligent, but also interpreting them in optimum partem, bona fide, 
and making the best of them. By no means will we drop the problems which concern them. Instead, we will pursue them further, repeatedly, meditating, considering, and reconsidering the very problems they posed, also at the same time, no doubt, putting them in the right perspective. Otherwise, theology might find the sons of today proving tomorrow to be enthusiastic rediscoverers and perhaps avengers of their grandfathers. The work of overcoming past weaknesses and errors, a work which was perhaps only apparently completed, would then have to begin all over again. May the dear Lord preserve us from that. For those among you who know German Davor bewahr uns, lieber Herre Gott. The next and last lecture will be held on the theme, the Spirit. <laughs>